Huh? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. So, so I- X-Men is what will bring me back. I'm like, okay, I'm now excited. If you get a really good X-Men, I don't care about Fantastic Four. I, I don't care. Sorry, I don't. And you can lie to yourself all you want. You don't care about Fantastic Four as well. Uh, <laughs> wow. I didn't see this coming. I didn't see this coming. Um, my first reaction is, what? <laughs> so, like, come on. So, see, for most people, their first reaction would be like, oh, my gosh, cool. Yes, he's back. Blah, blah, blah. But my reaction, which I think is the logical reaction, is didn't he get snapped out? Or didn't he snap himself to stop Thanos at the end game? So, my first thing is, the thing is understandable, which is like, it's confusion as to, huh? <laughs> This doesn't make any sense. So at first I was like, what? And personally for me, I actually don't think it's good casting because obviously Doctor Doom has been rumored for a while as to be the replacement to Kang and we'll get to to Kang. When people say, okay, who would be a great Doctor Doom? Now, if we're seeing the same actor, Matt Mickelson, in terms of his voice, his cadence, how he sounds like, what he looks like, everything about him is like, oh yeah, this makes a perfect Do- Doctor Doom. So it's like, yeah, do it. But you see, guys, here's here's the thing. There is what makes storytelling sense, film sense, and there's marketing. From a film storytelling sense, this is a horrible idea. And you know why this is a horrible idea? It negates this. You see, part of a good story are those heartbreaking moments where those characters that that you love, they leave and they never come back. So when we saw Iron Man get killed, it's like, oh, that's it. It's over. This guy that we have watched since 2008, we now saw him end. And I remember sitting in the cinema and people who were crying, sniffing because it was so emotional because this was a character who we'd grown so close to since 2008. So by now bringing him back, it negates this. So from a storytelling point of view, it's trash. Because you're like, okay. So because the whole point of it is now no one stays 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 dead. So if a character dies, oh, don't feel bad, they can come back. Which is why that whole ending of Infinity War didn't really hit because you knew that all these guys were going to come back. So that's from a storytelling point of view. From a marketing point of view, oh, it makes sense. MCU is failing. People think that MCU is washed. They've not been performing well post Endgame. So what do you do? Bring back one of the most popular characters. Like the most popular characters are Iron Man and Captain America. So 100% Cap is coming back. <laughs> they're going to bring it back. 100% that they're going to bring it back. So from a marketing point of view, from a popularity point of view, oh yeah, this makes sense. But you see... My thing here is, I'll I'll keep it a stack. I'll keep it a stack here. Um, this I think is a cheat code because the whole point of the multiverse and why it's a cheat code is because it negates great storytelling. Because if someone dies, oh yeah, just go into another universe and bring them back. So they may not be the same person, but you can almost cheat and say, well, they're not the same, but they're still the same. They're still the same, but they're not, not the same. So you're sort of doing two things at once. So I feel with this whole multiverse saga, like, it's a mess. So now, it's going to the point where if any character dies, you shouldn't feel bad. You shouldn't feel emotional because you you can just go into another version and then see them again. <laughs> Whereas if we have just one universe, one timeline, if you die, you die. It's over. And then that's hits you a lot more emotionally. But when you have the multiverse, then you then you definitely have a scenario where, oh, you just bring them back. You just bring them back. But guys, the whole point of Endgame was, it was, this was the end of a particular era. And now it's the offspring of a new era. But you have to understand, and this, and this is sad reality here. With the MC and Marvel, it's not about art or storytelling in and of itself. It's really about the business and it's about making money. 
And what they've seen is post endgame, people are not as invested into these characters as they were. So we have to bring back the characters who people loved. So bring it back Chris Evans, bring it back Robert Downey Jr. But for me, so okay, so that was so that was my first thing was like, okay, what? Huh? This makes no sense. This makes absolutely no sense. What the heck? So what this is and what this I think people are saying is he's a variant. So this is because he can't be a completely different character because that would confuse too many people. So what can only make sense is he is Tony Stark from a different universe. He's from a different timeline. So obviously when he now comes into this timeline that we all know, guys are like, wait, hang on, what? But no, this is a different kind of a, a, a Tony Stark. So that's where the, the kind of confusion will be. And obviously the idea is that he's going to appear in Fantastic Four. So remember, he's Fantastic Four's main villain is going to appear here. So that is where, where, where it is. And Fantastic Four. Guys, you know this is going to be the third time they're going to try to, to do this? This is what people have to understand here. Nobody cares about the Fantastic Four. The whole concepts of the Fantastic Four in 2024, I'm sorry, now. Nah. No one is checking for Fantastic Four. And I don't know why they keep running away from this. There is only one way to make the MC relevant again. There's only one way, and, and it's obvious. It ain't the Fantastic Four. I'm sorry. If it takes you three tries to get this right, maybe you shouldn't even try doing this again. <laughs> and also, the issue, though, is that you've got Pedro Pascal, who is in every single thing, and the guy's overexposed. This guy is in Last of Us. This guy is the Mandalorian. This guy's going to be in Gladiator 2. And now he's not going to be in Fantastic Four. Come on, bro. It's too much. It's too much, bro, with Pedro Pascal. So I'm sorry. No one is checking for Fantastic Four. No one cares about these bombs. I'm sorry. With all due disrespect, with all due disrespect, nobody is checking for the Fantastic Bricks. No one is. I'm sorry. No one's checking for the Fantastic Bricks. Guy, this is the saving grace. This is the saving grace of um, MCU. It's, it's not the Fantastic Four. It's not bringing back freaking Tony Stark on everything. The saving grace of what's really going on instill some life into the MCU is X-Men because X-Men is something that everyone knows and everyone loves. No one cares about the Fantastic Four. And the fact that you've tried twice and failed, no one cares. You've had an amazing X-Men 97 and obviously the popularity of guys like Wolverine and so forth. X-Men still has that juice. It still has that sauce and it's got the sauce and the juice and the interest that those fantastic bombs don't have. So that's why what you need. But what I find crazy is this. That's what I find crazy. Where's, where's, where's my thing here, man? Um, so you're telling me that Jonathan Majors lost his role of Kang because he got chased by his crazy white girlfriend. So that's what you're trying to tell me, that because he got chased all around New York by his psycho white girlfriend, he lost the role of Kang. Now, here's the thing. If you want to keep it fully a stack, they had to replace him. Perception is reality. This is Disney. It is about PR. And unfortunately, they couldn't really attach that whole situation to Disney moving forward. The second thing is, you present your big main villain in an Ant-Man movie and he gets beaten by freaking Ant-Man. Are you sick? Bro, so... It's like, I don't know, it's like, these guys are stupid, bro. This is supposed to be your big villain who, oh my God, this is the main guy. And he can't beat freaking Ant-Man. Yo, guys, do you remember when Homeboy was introduced? When Thanos was introduced, like, oh, this is Thanos, what's up, baby? What's up, baby? It's your boy Thanos. So it was real. So when we saw Thanos, like, oh my God, it's freaking Thanos. Wow. And then just that buildup of Thanos, you, you know, okay, no, this is that, that guy. Imagine if the first time we saw Thanos in a film, he got beat up by Ant-Man. Imagine that. Then you're like, bro, this guy ain't freaking tough. So you already undercut him in the way that you presented him. But look, here's my, my thing. The, the, this is the reality here. People have, will, have, will forget about Kang. They will. Um, because not only is Doctor Doom a very well-known villain, far well-known than Kang, 
it's Danny Jr. So you get to say, oh my gosh, Danny Jr. is back. Or is it possibly Iron Man back? And you get, and they're just riding off the wave of like, Danny Jr. has now returned back to the MCU. And look, am I surprised that Danny Jr. has returned back? See, no, because I've been watching some of his interviews, reading some of his interviews, and he said that um, some of his best work he believes that has gone most unnoticed is his work with Iron Man. And he always felt like, he felt, oh, yeah, look, I actually enjoyed it. So I think he obviously wanted just to get back to drama, do the drama thing, but I was like, look, no, this is something that I freaking enjoyed. And this is something that freaking made me. <laughs> now, he screwed over Terrence Howard, and you can go look up Google and go to YouTube about how he completely and totally screwed over Terrence Howard. But this is what made him. Remember, before Iron Man, the guy was a freaking alcoholic who was caught in the beds with kids and was in freaking jail and in prison. So... The guy was a criminal. <laughs> the guy was literally a, f a, a felon before Iron Man came and saved him. So, um, yeah, but look. Okay, oh, I almost forgot. This is obviously a big coup. The Ross is coming back. So the Ross is coming back, and I believe it's Stephen McFeely. So remember, Stephen McFeely and Christopher Marcos were the two writers who wrote Cap One, Winter Soldier, uh, Civil War, Infinity War, and Endgame. So it's so those are the guys. But obviously, it's only Stephen McPhee. I think it's Christopher Marcus who may not be in it. It's only one of those two writers, and of course, the the Russells. So look, I think what Kevin Feige wants to do is, hey guys, we're back. So what was what gave us our height? It was the Russells. Like the Russells, pretty much directed the most popular and beloved MCU films, which was, of, of course, Winter Soldier, Civil War, Infinity War, and, of course, Endgame. Those are the most beloved films, and the films that I think did the best financially. So they're like, oh, when well, Russell's are back, Danny Jr. is back, hey, we can say what's up. I'll say it again. The Russell's coming back doesn't excite me. I'm like, okay, cool, but it doesn't excite me. Um, Doctor Doom... Being played by Danny Jr., this doesn't excite me. Because I'm like, bro, no, no, we already we saw him being killed. So what are we saying? Um again, what again I, was, I know I'm this is it. <laughs> you can bring back Danny Jr., you can bring back the roses, you can bring back Chris Evans, you can do all that stuff. I just speak for myself, and maybe you guys be different, but I just speak for myself. Chris Evans coming back, Danny Jr. coming back, all these guys coming back now. Because that's whole thing is done. The only thing that will excite me and re-energize me is if you get X-Men, it's cast well, it's better than Bomber's trash brand singer crap, and it's like, all right, boom. So X-Men is what will bring me back. I'm like, okay, I'm now excited. If you get a really good X-Men, I don't care about Fantastic Four. I, I don't care. I'm sorry, I don't. And you can lie to yourself all you want. You don't care about Fantastic Four as well. You don't. I'm sorry. Lie to yourself. You don't care about Fantastic Four. Now, if Danny Jr. coming back excites you, hey, fair dues to you. But if a kid is stuck, Danny Jr. shouldn't be returning back to MCU. Chris Evans should not be returning back to MCU. The Russells, that makes sense. They're directors. You know, and they were very good directors. So the Russells coming back, that makes sense. Danny Jr. and Chris Evans should not be coming back. No. You should not, you should not be, be, be coming back. I'll be real with you. If someone told me the Russells are going to now be directing the next X-Men film, written by McFeely and Marcos, I'm okay. Let's let's see. Okay, now let, let's see what's up. Now that, will, now that will excite me. Russell's, the Captain America writers, X-Men, let's talk. And it's a totally re recasting with everything, not that bomber's Hugh Jackman, let's talk. So... That's my that's my thing there, man. But um, so look, here's the thing, and and okay, so so I think this is where we're at right now. This is now a very important film, so this has to succeed, because this is what's going to pretty much jettison and really propel the the next iteration of the MCU. Because, so if this flops, then they're screwed. 
I think you're p- putting a, it's a huge bet you're putting on Fantastic Four. It's a huge, massive bet. So look, I may be wrong. Fantastic Four could come out, could be a great film, really well made, people love them, massive so- success, and it could be great. It's cool. I just feel a safer, smarter bet is X-Men. Because the thing with Fantastic Four is, remember, all people know of Fantastic Four is, oh yeah, those two break us films. So you're already on the back foot of like, we don't like this. Whereas with X-Men, bro, even if those films were up and down, most people love those X-Men films. I thought those films were trash. Most people love them. X-Men 97 might win a freaking Emmy. It's literally one of the best cartoon shows, animated shows in recent years. So there's so much more goodwill with X-Men than there is with Fantastic Four. Because already guys are like, why am I going to watch a third iteration of this? You're now rebooting this for the second time after the, the, the two brick ones. So, because for me, I tell you for me personally, I don't want to watch Fantastic Four. I don't. I have no interest in Fantastic Four. I didn't read the comics. I didn't watch the cartoons. I was just not a fan of this show. I just, I, I've not been a fan of this comic at all. So, but yet again, but again, that's they're writing on this. This is what they are they are writing on, and I think with this, see, because it's marketing. What they're hoping is okay. Fantastic Four, uh, Downey Jr., Doctor Doom. That's what's going to bring people in stress. And pro, for the promo, Downey Jr. is going to be front and center. He's going to be the first name. Is this going to be starring Danny Jr. and he's going to be the main guy and the main attraction? to that film. So guys, it's all marketing. It's all marketing. So for me, Fantastic Four, it's going to, at the very least, do well. At least 500 to 600 mil because of Danny Jr. tax. Especially if the film's amazing, or it, it probably makes a bill. If it's not that great, I think it makes at least 400, 500 mil based off of the novelty of Danny Jr. So either way, it can't really fully fail, but I'm sorry, man. Kevin, if you're listening, this right here, this is your saving grace, y'all.